Okay, last chapter, chapter 11, we're talking about current liabilities and payroll. And I'm actually um, not going to talk about all the current liabilities. The main one I want to talk about is sales tax. So sales tax, first of all, for a business is not an expense. So the, 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 the store, say the retailer, collects the sales tax, but then they pass it on to the state government or whatever. So it's not, it's not for them. Um, so this actually is a liability because they collect it and then at some point in the future then they have to forward that on. So at the time of the sale, the retailer, for example, collects both the money for the sale and the tax together. And when you go to a store, that's what you see, right? You pay the, the amount plus the tax, that's how much cash you fork over. But the business only keeps the sale. The rest of it then, they have to um, forward uh, the taxes collected to the state. <clears throat> and so the way that would look at the time of the sale, uh, I'm going to debit cash and I would have, let's say, uh, let's see, our credit sales revenue, let's say the amount of the sale was $10,000. And then I would collect that plus, let's say, 6% tax, so that's $600. So the total cash I collect is ten thousand six hundred. But only the ten thousand is mine. The rest of this is not mine. I owe that to the government because I collected it on their behalf. So I owe that, so that's a liability, and we'll call that sales tax payable. And um, then when it comes time to pay the taxes, uh, depending on how much revenue they earn, that, that, that kind of determines how often they have to pay. A small business might only pay quarterly. A larger business with more revenue would have to pay monthly. Um, so when it comes time to pay that, they would debit sales tax payable for the 600 and credit cash for the 600. Keep in mind, this does not affect revenue. It's not my revenue, so I don't count it as revenue. It doesn't impact my expenses. This is not an expense to me. And so it does not impact my net income at all. I'm just a go-between, I collect it from the customer, and then I pass it on. And the time I have it, it's sitting here as a liability for me. Some banks um, or some firms would put this all in the same account, and some banks would take this 10060 and they would take 10000 and put it in their account, and they would take the other 600 and stick it in another account. So when it comes time to pay those taxes, they have the money. Um, so they're not tempted to to spend it and <clears throat> use it until it's time to pay and then uh, have it. So in this example, uh, the feather company recorded merchandise sales uh, on account $20,000, 9% sales tax. On August 15th, then they paid sales tax to the state. These are unrelated transactions. Um, it seems like they'd be related, but the numbers don't match up. So on July 5th, when they make this purchase, they'll debit cash. I'll fill that in last. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not even cash, it's accounts receivable for this one. So they're going to debit accounts receivable. They're going to credit sales revenue for the $20,000. And then they're going to credit sales tax payable for the 9% of uh, $20,000, so that's $1,800. So those two things together go into accounts receivable. So that's 21.8 in accounts receivable. And then on August 15th, let's see, they paid this one on July or whatever. And so now it's another month. Um, they're paying uh, their sales tax payable. So I'll just debit sales tax payable and credit cash for $1,200. And that's all there is to that one. Just remember that it's not part of their revenue or their expenses. They're just kind of the middleman there forwarding along. The next thing I want to talk about this chapter is payroll. So we have um, uh, two things to consider, the payroll from the employee side and from the employer side. So the first thing is about calculating pay. And if you've ever gotten a paycheck, you see this. So the pay can be salary. It can be wages if they're hourly employees, if they're if they've got, if they're hourly employees, they can qualify for overtime. Um, 
salespeople often get paid commission, so that's another type of pay. Um, you might get a, a bonus. So all of those types of things. Um, if it's wages and they get overtime, so generally they get uh, what we call straight time for their base, we'll call that the base pay. Uh, that's usually for the first 40 hours. It, it, it can vary. It's not always 40 hours, but most of the time it is. So for set, some set number of hours. And then any hours um, over that, you know, over that 40 or whatever that base is, then they get overtime. So, for example, if they worked 42 hours, they would get 40 hours at their base rate and then two hours at the overtime rate, which is generally used to like time and a half or double time or something. That really depends on the employer. So the gross earnings, uh, that's your, your, your basic pay, which you'd get from your wages or your salary or commission, minus the deductions are the take-home pay or net pay. Now, if you think back to your first paycheck, that was probably the most shocking thing you saw. You saw these gross earnings, and you were all happy there. Oh, look how much I made. And then you see all these things that they take out. And so your take-home pay was much lower. That's generally the thing people remember about their first paycheck is how shocking that was, the difference between the two. So let's talk about those deductions here. Um, so payroll taxes and other deductions. There are some things that are required to be taken out of anyone's check. Um, most people are pretty familiar with these. You see these on your paycheck every week. So there's federal income withholding tax. And that is uh, the amount that's taken out of your check for your, um, for your federal income tax. The amount that's taken out is determined by what you put on your W-4. So you can adjust that so you have more or less taken out. Keep in mind that this doesn't really change, this doesn't at all change your tax obligation. This just changes how much is taken out of your check. So at the end of the year, when you pay your taxes, you compare what you owe to what you've had withheld, and the difference is your refund or what you owe. So this determines, this W-4 determines what comes out of your check, but that does not change what's um, what your actual tax debt is. Uh, most states also have state income tax. There are some states that don't, uh, like Florida doesn't, and I think there's a couple others that don't, but most of us have to pay state income tax as well. Uh, the other um, mandatory out of everyone are uh, the two FICA taxes. So uh, there's the Old Age and Survivors Disability Insurance, also known as Social Security, and then there's Medicare. So both of those are part of FICA. Um, for both of these, the employee pays half of the tax, and the other half is paid by the employer. And we have the same thing for Medicare. It's half and half. So whatever you see taken out of your check, the, your employer has to pay that same amount. So let's say it's a 12.5% a, a tax. You pay six and a quarter, and they pay six and a quarter. Um, there is a cap on Social Security. There is no cap on Medicare. So that means, like, the first uh, 120, let's say, I'm just estimating, it's, I think it might be like 118 or something, uh, of, your, of your salary each year, you have to pay Social Security on that. But once you hit that cap, anything over that is not subject to Social Security tax. Medicare your whole income is subject to Social Security tax. And we'll see a couple of examples um, here where, where that comes into play. But if you make under the cap, then your whole, your whole income is subject to Social Security. Uh, and once you cross that line, then you um, don't have to pay Social Security anymore, but you do have to pay Medicare on everything. Some other optional things that are very common payroll deductions, uh, Health insurance premiums generally come out of people's checks. Um, retirement contributions. And these, like a 401k uh, or a pension or something like that, um, 
often come out pre-tax, so that means they take this out first and then they figure out your tax, so that money is not taxed up front because you'll be taxed on it later. Um, uh, charitable contributions. We just got our uh, thing here for United Way, so I can contribute to the United Way every month and they just take it out of my check. And then, again, for any of these, my employer, these aren't, my, my employer's not getting money for these. So my employer takes the money out of my check and then forwards it on to the, to the right person, so the United Way or the, or the insurance company or whatever. So these act really pretty much just like the um, uh, uh, the the sales tax, where they just collect it and it sits in a payable and then they forward it on to whoever it goes to. But these are not um, uh, for the business. This is not money coming to them. So. I have a couple of examples here, and we're going to use the following information. So first, I'm going to start with the employee one, so we're going to use this. So Social Security is 6.2, so here's my Social Security, 6.2% on the first 117, so that's my cap. Medicare, if um, everything I make under 200000 they're going to tax at 1.45%. Anything over that, I'm going to go to 2.35. And then the rest of this, I'm going to save for the second half, okay? So this is in your book. Um, you can can follow along with that one. So the first example we have here is Jenna Lindsay works at the College of Boston. She gets $40 an hour for a $40 week and then or for a 40 hour week and then anything over that um, she gets time and a half. That's her overtime rate. So if she worked 54 hours, uh, 54 hours total, 40 hours is regular. So that means 14 hours she will get the overtime rate. And the overtime rate is time and a half. So if $40 is the regular rate, or her base rate, times 1.5, her overtime rate is $60 an hour. So we will compute, uh, I think I have it under two things here so I can fit it. So the first thing we're going to do is compute all of her deductions, and then we're going to do the journal entry. So first we'll do her gross pay here. So uh, the, the straight time of the base rate will be the 40 hours regular times her base rate, which is $40 an hour. So that is $1,600. And then her overtime, she worked 14 hours of overtime. So that's 14 hours times $60. So that is $840 overtime. And that takes us to $2,440 is her gross earnings. Her gross pay. So then we can figure out the deductions from that, right? So her deductions will be um, <clears throat> how much they take out depends on, like I said, your W your W your W four, but also different. They take out at different rates, married and single, and all that kind of stuff. So she gets ten percent. A nice fat ten percent there. So her um, federal income tax will be 10%, so that's um, 244, so it's always a percent of her gross pay. The um, Social Security, which will be the 6.2% we said, so this was a 10%, this is the 6.2%, and they told us that she's not um, less than the limit, so she hasn't crossed over that threshold, so her whole thing will be so the whole 240, 2440 at 62 at 6.2%. Sorry, that gives me 151.28. And then the Medicare we said was um, 1. Uh, you say 1.45% of her whole pay of the 2440. So that comes out to 35.38, and that's usually pretty pretty small. So uh, total withheld or total deductions is four thirty um, sixty nine. Oh, sixty six. So that means her net pay or her take home pay is her gross pay minus her deductions. That's two oh oh nine thirty four. There we go. So um, to turn this into a journal entry, uh, we need the gross pay. We need each of these ex each of these 
deductions is going to go into a payable account. And then the net pay is what she's actually going to get paid. So this will be the actual expense to the business. This will be the actual payable as terms of um, what she's going to get paid. So we'll just use all these same numbers. So ho hopefully you can just, well, just trust me that I'll use the same numbers that we just calculated over here. And so it'll look like this. So and now I'm doing number three here. So I will debit wage expense. And this amount here will be for the gross pay. So that's going to be uh, 24.40. And then each of my deductions will get a payable account. So this will be federal income tax payable. And that was 244. That's a credit to that liability. And then I'll have um, Social Security tax payable. If you're doing this in um, in my lab, it'll use the real name. So let's say like FICA O A S D I tax payable. <clears throat> it'll have the real name of it. 15128. And then we had Medicare tax payable, which is really FICA, Medicare tax payable. That was the 3538. And then the difference will go to wages payable. And that'll be the amount of her net pay. And that'll be what I need to make my debits equal my credits. So that came out to 200934. When a, an employer pays payroll, they always do it in two steps. So I've got this journal entry to accrue the wages, and then I pay it. And so then when I pay it, I will debit the wages payable for the amount in there, which is 200934. And I will credit cash 200934. So I want to do one more. We'll do it the same way. And then this is kind of. Um, uh, a little bit more complicated. So in this example, Lori Waverly works for MRK and she has a monthly salary of 12,000. She doesn't have any overtime. Her federal income tax is at 20% of her gross pay. She pays 4% to the United Way. She'll $125 a month for health insurance. She'll still have to pay Social Security and Medicare, but um, her cumulative earnings going into this pay period are 108. So the cap on Social Security is 117,000, we said. Her cumulative going in here is 108. So that means only $9,000 of this paycheck is taxable for Social Security. So even though her pay is 12,000, only 9,000 of that is going to be subject to Social Security tax. After this pay, it, her Social Security tax will be zero. So up until this pay period, it was all the 6.2%. Everything after this pay period, her Social Security will be zero. But on this one, we have to split it. So only 9,000 of the 12,000 is subject to Social Security. And we said in our beginning there that Social Security is 6.2%. Um, so that means her Social Security tax is going to be 558.000. Um, so I think that's probably the easiest way to do that. And then the Medicare, we're still below that um, 200,000, or that, I'm sorry, yeah, that 200,000, because this, this one, we, she started at 108, and this will bring her up to 120. So we're still well below that, so we don't have to worry about anything with Medicare. But her, um, her gross pay, right, is the 12,000, her salary. If we look at her deductions, we'll have federal income tax, and that we said is 20%. So that's going to be 2400 And we'll have um, her, her, her FICA Social Security. That's what we just figured out right here. So that's the 558. Then we'll have her FICA Medicare 
that'll be the 1.45%. Um, so that comes out 1.45 of the 12,000 comes out to 174. And then she has health insurance coming out of 125. And she has United Way, which is 4% of her gross pay. So 4% of the um, 12,000 is 480, I think. So those are all her deductions. So if we add that up, her total withholding, the total amount withheld from her paycheck is 37.37. So her net pay is the gross pay minus the total withholding. So she will bring home 82.63. Um, so that's what that looks, and again with the journal entry, so this will be the, the wage expense, the gross pay will be the wage expense. We'll have a payable for each one of these, because again, none of these are going to the business. It's paying her, right? They're just collecting these and forwarding on, and then this will be my wages payable, the net pay. So the journal entry will look like this. We'll have salary expense instead of wage expense. Uh, that I'll debit that, and again, that's for her gross pay, which is the twelve thousand. And then we'll have um, a credit to federal income tax payable. That was for twenty four uh, twenty four hundred, sorry. And then we'll have like a social security payable that was for the 558 and then we've got like a medicare tax payable that was 174 and then we'll have health insurance payable again this isn't money going to the business, they just collect this and then forward it to the insurance company. So that's 125 a month. And then they collected money for the United Way. So they'll forward, they'll take that out and they'll forward it on. They owe this money to the United Way. That's 480. I'm sure there's other going to be other things like state taxes, um, but since we're just doing the ones that'll be the same for, for everybody. So then the rest of it goes to her, right? That's what she gets to take home. So salaries payable will be the difference, which is the 82.63, that's her net pay. So they do that, they, they, they record the, salary, the, the payroll and then they pay it. So when they actually cut her the check, they'll debit salaries payable for 82.63. And they'll credit cash because they're writing her a check, eighty-two sixty-three. So that's what it looks like from the employee side. Now the employer has to pay taxes as well. So they collect the taxes that are um, that on the employee's behalf and forward them on, but then they owe taxes as well. So I'll make that into um, video number two, where we'll pick up and do the other half of the payroll, which is the employer side.